crunching in particular is sort of the go-to for all abs classes. I think when you find, when you first start, you're mostly going to feel it in your neck um, until you build that strength and really getting that perfect alignment so you don't feel any neck, it's really hard. Your elbows are gonna sneak in. So I've avoided all crunches, first tick. If you find that you get um, pain in your wrists, so you're on that journey of building um, strength in your wrists, I've got alternate alternatives throughout this entire class where you can do everything on your elbows. So take those. I think there's a couple where I've sort of gone, you can do either or, so take those. And then if you find that you're sort of early in your journey of building core strength, put your knees down. So I'm gonna tell you throughout there's options to put your knees down. And I'll actually say, I've got a really strong core personally. And I find some of the positions when I put my knees down, my form actually is on point and I feel it more. So, you know, putting your knees down isn't dialing it down to a, a lower level. Sometimes it's actually giving you more of a chance to focus. So try and switch your brain into that beginner's mentality at times to see and sort of build it back up of actually do I get more when I dial this position down. The last thing, just the last thing, is throughout this entire class you're going to have to put that mental monkey mind onto the abs. So at times you'll think, oh this is easy, and you'll notice that you've let your stomach flare. So you want to always be pulling that stomach in, scooping it in, pulling that belly button in towards the spine, keeping that focus there. And then that monkey mind is going to tell you, that's enough, I've had enough, I'm really done. She's counting to 10, I'm, I'm done at four. You may find that you could have pushed yourself further, but it's just about calming that monkey mind, making sure that chatter comes to a lower level and you just push yourself, maybe one more, two more, to see where you get to. All right, on that note, let's crack on. So as usual, we're just going to get into our comfortable cross-seated position. And we're going to start stretching on our way down the body. So as usual, we're going to do right ear to right shoulder. So make sure your posture is nice, sitting really tall. We've lengthened through that midpoint of the body. Right ear to right shoulder, dropping it down. <clears throat> and this one, you should feel a nice stretch down the side of your left hand. If you want a little more, you can place your hand just on the top of your head, and then you can place your left hand down to the mat and just push a little bit away from there. Holding for two more breaths. <clears throat> One more breath. And as you inhale, back to center. And then we're going to do the opposite side. <clears throat> Sounds like I'm losing my voice today, that's interesting. Left ear, left shoulder. Remembering your posture. If you want a little more, you can actually put a little bit of weight at the top of your head, releasing the other hand down. And we're just going to hold that for two more breaths. One more breath. And as you inhale, coming back to, to centre, neutral spine, we'll drop the chin to the chest and then we'll do some neck rotations or neck circles. So from here as you exhale, chin to chest, you need the left shoulder, left ear to left shoulder first. And we're going to fill our lungs as we look up and look back. Starting to exhale, right ear, right shoulder. And then as you exhale, completely chin to chest. One more. Left ear, left shoulder. Looking up, looking back. Inhale. <clears throat> right ear, right shoulder. Coming down, chin to chest, to reverse the circles. So right ear, right shoulder. Looking up, looking back. <clears throat> left ear, left shoulder. Exhale, chin to chest. One more. Right ear, right shoulder. Looking up, looking back. Left ear, left shoulder. Exhaling, chin to chest. As you inhale, coming back up to neutral. We'll just work our way down the body now. So placing your left hand onto your right knee, we're going to place our right hand behind us, sitting tall and then spiraling around to look over your right shoulder. Remember your breath in this position, just keep that nice flow of inhale and exhale as long as you can. Big long breaths, smooth inhale, smooth exhales. Holding for two more breaths. One more breath. On your next inhale, leading with the nose, coming back round to neutral spine, swapping the hands. Left hand goes behind us, we're going to look behind, look over, nice 
soft gaze over the left shoulder. Remember that posture, sitting nice and tall. And then the long inhales and long exhales. Two more breaths. Last breath as you inhale, coming back round, leading with the nose, back round to neutral. This time we're going to place both of our hands behind us. Some people like to make a bind. Just try and make sure that your pinkies are coming towards each other. <coughs> we're going to open up through the chest, nice heart open up. So from this one, as you look up, look back, and then pull the shoulder blades back as if they're snuggling in to touch each other. Open up through the chest, push through that heart centre. Looking up, holding for three more breaths. Two more breaths. One last breath. And on your next inhale, bringing the head back to neutral and releasing the arms forward. We're gonna come into tabletop position now. So hands and knees. In this one, if you've done my classes before, you know I'm obsessed with posture in this one. Fingers are spread nice and wide. We're going to make sure that we've got bone on bone on bone. So your wrists are underneath your elbows, underneath your shoulders. We want one nice, nice line there. And then as far as your, your knees are concerned, they're underneath your hip sockets rather than your hips. You might have wide hips, I don't want them there. Underneath the hip sockets. Just make sure, have a little play. Maybe if you step them back, you're like, okay, that's definitely not comfortable. Ah, that feels right. You don't want it too far forward or you'll end up sort of sitting on your haunches. You don't want that one either. Just make sure they're under your hips. In this position, we're going to do some hovers. So tabletop hovers. And what it'll look like is you'll push the mat away. Your knees will come off the mat, but the tops of your feet will actually stay onto the mat. So as you inhale to prepare, exhale, hover. Push the mat away. Scoop that lower belly in. Holding for five, scoop the belly in, four, three, two, and on the one, slowly lowering down, don't drop yourself. Okay, that's our first one, we'll do one more. Remembering that if you find that you haven't got your bone on bone on bone, so you're not having your wrist underneath your shoulders, when you hover it'll feel really weird and you'll feel actually quite unbalanced. So just make sure you've got that weight Distributed over their wrists. And then as we inhale, exhale, hover. Push the mat away, pick the knees up. Make sure you stay open through the chest and that the shoulders haven't snuck up near the ears. Keep that open. Holding for five, four, three, two. And the one slowly lowering down. Okay, so I did promise no wrists. That's probably one of the last ones that uh, is quite the amount of weight on there. Next one we're going to do is opposites. So it's your tabletop opposite. So you're going to pick up your left hand and the opposite to that being your right leg will extend behind. And then as you exhale, you'll bring them in so that you've got your elbow coming into your knee. And then as you inhale, they'll come out. Let's do that together. As we exhale, come on in. Elbow to knee, pause, and then as you inhale, open the back out. Exhale, elbow to knee, pause. Inhale, back out. Exhale, elbow to knee, pause, and now back out. One last one. Elbow to knee, pause, and then back out. Release them down. Let's swap to the other side. So again, check your posture just to make sure nothing's moved. We've got our weight over our wrists. We're going to pick up our right hand. Left leg extends behind opposites. And then we're going to exhale, bringing our hands in. Pause. Inhale, coming back out. Again, exhale. Bring the elbow to meet the knee. Pause. Then back out. One more, exhale, elbow to knee, pause, back out, and again, exhale, elbow 
it to knee, pause, back out, one last one, we're evening it out on both sides, elbow to knee, pause, and extend it back out, and then release it back down. From here, I just want you to sit your, your tailbone back towards your heels. We're going to come into what's called balasana or child's pose. And within this, I want this to be the position that you revert to at any stage throughout this practice where you think, oh, she's lost me, it's too much, I just need a rest. This is the one to go for. So releasing the elbows down to the mat and then releasing your head down to the mat, bringing your arms back around towards your feet. So your legs can be either really close together, a little gap between, whatever feels good. And in this one, you'll just return here at any stage you want to, just to regain your breath. Just have a little pause. And then you can rejoin the class at any stage. Two more breaths in this position. One more breath. Okay, bringing the hands back round to the front. We're going to lead with our nose. Nose comes up first, looking up, coming back into our tabletop position. So from here, we're going to do some, what I call your plank rocks, rocking back and forth. So from here, again, we talked about having um, alternatives. If you want, and I actually personally prefer it this way, placing your elbows down where your hands came from. So you know that your hands were underneath your, el your shoulders, placing the elbows there. Your challenge throughout the class is to make sure that your hands don't sneak in. They're going to want to come in, which puts more weight through the shoulders. We want it through the stomach. So keeping them like train tracks. And when the way to do that is to spread your fingers wide and then claw the mat as if you were like hanging on to a rock face. So really claw with just the fingertips of your hands. Arms like train tracks. We're going to place the right foot back, the left foot back. We're now in plank. If this is too much, place your knees down but see how they're not down underneath my hips, they're a bit further back. And then you'll rock forward and rock back, scooping that belly in. So for those that are on their toes, rocking forward, weight comes past your elbows, weight comes back. Rock forward, rock back, rock forward. You should feel it through your abs, really, really feel this through your abs. If you want to intermediate students and you want a bit more, you may want to push back up into dolphin and then lower down. Push the hips back into dolphin, lower down. These ones are called dolphin push-ups, but they're amazing for your abs. For the rest of us, just rocking back and forth. Five more. Four more. Remember your breath. Three more. Two more. And on the one. Just letting your hips come down to the floor, releasing the toes behind you. What you'll find here is in your sphinx pose. So just pushing through your elbows, slightly push up. Doesn't matter how high this is, but you should feel a nice release through the abs. Make sure that your shoulders haven't snuck up near your ears. You're really pushing your shoulders away from the ears, really bringing that heart chakra forward. We'll hold this for five more breaths. Regain your breath. Four more breaths. Three. In any of these positions, always engage your glutes. Two. It's going to stop you dumping into your lower back. One more breath. From here, we're going to bring our arms into a genie position or stacking your elbows like this. So they're stacked elbow to elbow as if you were a genie and you were going to grant a wish. Within this position, we're going to do some side planks back and forth. So you can do this on your knees. You can do this on your hand if you want to come up onto your hands. I think it's actually better to do it on your elbows. You'll find that you'll be a bit more focused and a bit more conditioned to making sure your form's okay. So we're going to come up onto your knees. But remember, don't sneak them all the way back in. <coughs> up onto your knees. <coughs> oh my God, my voice. <coughs> up onto your knees and we're going to take the right hand up and make sure that that right leg extends straight. 
bringing it back down. Roll your hips over again. And roll your hips up. Make sure that leg is straight. And rolling it down. This time as you bring that right arm up, I want you to pulse that, that left hip up. And bring it back down. One more. Rolling that arm up. Pulse that hip up. And back down. If you want more and you're intermediate, you're on your toes in this one. Bringing the arm up. Pulse the hip up. And back down. If you want more, you can come up onto your hands. And bring the arm up. Pulse. And bring the arm down. I promise that we wouldn't do too much on our wrists. So let's continue that way. Three more. Two more. Ooh, last one. Pulse that hip at the top and release it down. Bring your hips back to the mat. Make a little pillow with your hands in front, releasing the forehead down. Regain your breath. Big breath. Three more breaths. Two more breaths. One last breath. All right, we get to repeat on the other side. So, bringing your elbows back underneath your shoulders. Make your genie arms. You're gonna have your left hand is gonna be on top this time. We're going to either come up onto your knees, if you're new to this position or want to just practice your form, and then you're going to extend that left leg long, tracing your arm to come up. Look at that extended hand and back down. Hips roll back down and again. Up. Rolling it back down, hips come back again. On your third one, pulse that top hip, that bottom hip up. And if you're intermediate, come back onto your toes, rolling them up, pulse that hip, and back down, tracing the hands when you come down. Three more, pulse, down again, up again, pulse, down again, up again, last one, pulse again, and release it back down. Bring your knees to the mat. Extend your hands out, we're coming into puppy pose. Nice surrender position for a relax between these ones. Your elbows will, again, train track. So we've got our elbows out in front. And we're going to sit back or rock back. Tailbone pushes back, head comes to, if it's available to you, it comes to the mat. If it's not available to you, that's no concerns. Just pushing it back. And this one you may want to like see with your knees. Extend the knees back a bit further and see if you get a nicer release through the chest. We're here to regain our breath, so just nice long breaths. Three more breaths. Two more breaths. One last breath. We're going to lead with our nose. Nose comes up first. Following through. But in this one, we've come back into <coughs> our tabletop position. So I've got alternatives here. If you're someone that's on the journey with their wrists and you think, oh, they're quite a bit sore, or I don't enjoy being on my wrists as much, you can come down onto your elbows. And again, it's always where your hands would have been. Elbows come down. And you're going to either step your knees back so nice alternative here, step your knees back, then not directly under my hips, a bit further back. You're going to come into a modified mountain climber. So your knee would come to your elbow, and you sink down as you do that. You'll do that on each side. So 10 of those on each side. For anyone that wants more, coming onto your hands, if your wrists are available to you, we're going to do what's called plank squares if you've done them before. So for this one, just watch me and then we'll, we'll do them together. So hands are nice and spread wide, fingers are clawing the mat, there's a little clawing action. I've made sure that my posture's correct, I've got bone on bone on bone, weights over the wrists. I pick up my right foot, I bring my knee to my elbow, 
to my wrist, across to the other elbow, across to the other wrist, and then back into plank. And I push back into downward facing dog for a second. Coming back, pick up the other leg, left. Left knee to left elbow, left knee to left wrist. Across to my other wrist, across to my other elbow. Putting the hand back, pushing back into downward facing dog. Now this one's intense, we're not gonna do too many. The rest of you guys are going to be doing your mountain climbers. So mountain climbers can either be done on the, on the hands, bringing the knee to the elbow. It can be done on the elbows, from the actual toes, stepping through. You're just gonna do 10 on each side for that. Because for the rest of us on our hands doing the squares, we're gonna die. But it's good. That's what you're here for, some nice abs. So I'm gonna take you through squares because I think it's more important that I do the advanced one here because it is more difficult. As much as I'm gonna puff my way through it, let's do it together. So check your posture. Fingers are spread wide, I'm clawing through my fingertips. I've got bone on bone on bone. I haven't stepped too far forward or too far back. Picking up the right leg, bringing the knee in. Right knee to right elbow. To right knee to <laughs> wrist, opposite elbow, opposite wrist, bringing the leg back, pushing back, down facing dog. Heels are driving down, chest comes towards the mat. Following through. Back into plank, check your posture. Picking up our left, knee to left elbow, knee to wrist, opposite wrist, opposite elbow, pushing back, downward facing dog. Two more. Coming back into your plank. Right comes up, right elbow, right wrist, left wrist, left elbow, left wrist, back. Downward facing dog, one more to go. Here we go. Coming back into plank. Picking up my left. Coming to the elbow, left elbow. Left wrist, right elbow, right wrist. Pushing back, back into downward facing dog. And we'll meet everybody in child's pose here. Knees come to the mat. Do the extended legs, so bring your knees out as far as the mat's white width. Big toes come together, heels come back towards the mat. We're just gonna walk the hands out in front. If it's available to, releasing the head down to the mat, coming into your extended child pose, Balasana. This one's a nice recovery. If you find you're very tight through the shoulders, in this one your body will let you know, you'll have a little bit of moaning going on. If you find that, bring your hands into a Namaste prayer position behind the back or the nape of your neck. It'll give you a nice little bit of relief there. We're just going to stay here for five breaths, just to return your breathing to a level where you can continue to train. That's quite a difficult one. If you were doing the mountain climbers, regardless of what knees down or on your toes, it's really tough. You would feel that through the entirety of your, your core there. Three more breaths. Two more breaths. On your last breath, if your hands are in the prayer position, bring them back to the mat. We're going to lead with the nose, a little bit of weight goes into the hands. We're going to come up back into our tabletop position. I want you to sit back onto your heels, bring the hands back just into what's called hero's pose. And then you're going to bump the hips to one side, you choose your side, and we're just going to bring our legs around and swap over into our supine positions. So I'm just going to bump my hips to the left, bringing my legs back around with me. So, we've managed to survive our prone positions. Good. Hopefully everyone's still with me. In the supine positions, this is normally where we'd be jumping onto our back and doing a whole heap of crunches, which I'm actively avoiding. So, within this one, what I'd like to do is called scissor kicks. Um, with your scissor kicks, you're going to bring your legs up like this. So your feet are flat on the mat. You're going to put your hands behind you. Your hands can be either in line with your hip bones there. I find that's a bit tight for me. 
pretty tight through the chest person. So just down to the side, find a position that feels comfortable. We're not going to put loads of weight into our hands here. So again, it's not a big workout for the wrists if you've got weak well, wrists that are on a journey for strength. I won't say weak wrists. From here, you're going to just rock back a little bit. And we're going to pick up our right foot, extending the toes towards our face. And then our left. So from here, you can find that you're already probably feeling it. You really scoop through that belly. You're probably already feeling it. We're going to release the right foot down slowly, then bring it back up. Then your left down, slowly, don't touch the ground, bring it back up. Then we're going to start to scissor them. So right comes down, we scissor with our left. And again, scissoring across, left comes up. Scissoring again. And again. Five more. Scoop that belly in. Four more. Three more. Two more, the slower you can do it, the better. Last one. Bring both legs to the top and slowly release them down. Five, four, three, two. And on the one, release them down. Push on up, bring both legs in, give your legs a hug. This genuinely is a yoga position as well. <laughs> release your nose towards your knees. Just regain your breath there. Big long breaths. It's quite a strong core workout. There's definitely one that's got some elements in here you can incorporate into any of your practices. After a run that you might go on, it's just it's all your alternatives to being able to work out your abs without having to do crunches, which wasn't available to me with my back injury, so this has been a bit of a passion project of making sure I can still work my abs, still build strength through my core to protect my lower back, but uh, being able to do that without having to do crunches. Two more breaths. One last breath. On your next inhale, releasing the hands back behind you. We're coming into our final position. Now this one's boat. Boat pose I think is probably the one I get the most benefit from. And with your boat, you can do high boats to low boats. There's alternatives. I think at this moment, just watch me and what I'm doing before you jump in, just to make sure that we're working on your form correctly. In your boat position, again, we're not gonna put much weight through the hands. And depending what alternative you take, you probably won't put your hands behind you if that's the case. So from here, you're gonna scoop that lower belly in, pulling that spine close into, the, into your belly button, into your spine. We're gonna open through the chest. So in these positions, really proud, open chest. Your shoulders are gonna pull away from the ears. We're gonna pick up the right foot and you want this line here to be level with the, with the flooring. So throughout it, as you get tired, it'll start to come down. I'm gonna remind you to pick it back up. We're gonna make sure our toes are flexed towards our face. It always further increases that through the abs. Then you're going to, again guys, you're letting me do this. No need to follow along yet. Pick up the left. Then we're gonna let our toes point and we're going to do toe taps. One, two. And we'll continue to do those toe taps. And if you're looking for more, you can actually lean further down and do more toe taps. So like bending further into the elbows. If you want more, you can extend your hands long, then do toe taps. If you're not feeling it, and you can do both toe taps, bring them both down and both back up. If you want even more, you can do your high to low boat. So extending your legs out long, and then bringing them back in. If you do that, I'd like your toes flexed towards your face. Down, and up. As you bring your feet in, you exhale. Right, lots of alternatives there. Choose your weapon or potentially work your way through all of them and find which one feels good for you today. Okay, so we're sitting nice and tall. You're sitting onto those sit bones, those parts of your skeleton you can feel pushing through on your glutes. You're sitting onto your sit bones, nice and tall. Energy is coming through the crown chakra, opening up through that chest. That's the first thing that's gonna cave in when you start to feel that this is a bit too much. When it caves, you're uh, resistance is going to go through your lower back rather than through your spine, uh, through your stomach. So sitting nice and tall. From this, I'm going to place my hands behind and we're going to probably work our way through. 
So we're picking up right foot. Oh, sorry. Fingers pointing towards your bum. Right foot, left foot. Have a check. Does it look like it's, it's sitting flat? Flush with the floor, in line? We're going to point our toes and you're going to do a quick toe tap. Right foot and back up. Left foot and back up. Again, right. Left. Can you feel it through your stomach? If not, lean a little bit further back. You should lean back enough that you feel this shake that's happening through your stomach. If you're in a live class with me, you could probably see mine shaking like crazy. <laughs> Continue the toe taps. Make sure you breathe because you're going to gas out if you don't have these nice solid breaths. If you want more, I'll just put my hands out here. Open through that chest, shoulders nowhere near the ears. Keep toe tapping. Ten more. Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, open through the chest, six, are your level, legs coming back level, five, four, keep breathing, three, two, and on the one, keeping your legs level at the top, slowly release them down, five, point the toes at you, four, three, two, and on the one, rolling up with them. Oof. Oh, did you feel that? <laughs> I'll show everybody for that. Right. I'm going to scoot a little bit forward so you can see me the whole time. For those that have had enough, just lay back. Recline back onto the mat. We're going to come into Shavasana. For those that want the last tiny little bit, so you're going to really juice that lemon. Point your toes towards your face. Really sit up tall, we're in Dandasana, this active pose. You may want to take the fleshy part of your glutes out, so you're sitting onto those sit bones. Bring your arms out like train tracks, and again, don't scoop through the chest, so open them up, really proud through that chest. Shoulder blades are turned back, they're almost squeezing together and down. Shoulders aren't anywhere near the ears. Here we go. We're going to recline back for 10. Lost my headphone. I'm really having a day, but today. We're going to recline back for 10. So here we go. Scoop that lower belly in. Feel it engage. That's that belly button near the spine. And reclining back. Four, 10, 9, 8, 7. Make sure those toys are pointed at the face. 6, 5. You want to be halfway down. This is the halfway point. 4. Keep that chest open. Three, two, one more to go. One, and releasing it down. Oof. Bring the arms above the head. Really point the toes. Big body stretch. Full extension. Oh, that feels amazing. Bring the knees into the chest. And then give them a little hug towards the chest of your body. Maybe bring the nose up to meet the knees if that feels good. Just rolling back and forth, nice reclined lower back massage for you. And then releasing the right leg down, the left leg down. We're going to come into Shavasana, or the end of this, which is the lovely relaxation part with Shavasana, or corpse pose. I say this every time, but it's worth repeating. It isn't statue pose. If you start to find that your lower back is giving you a pneumonia reminders, just move. So from this one, legs will just splay out to the side, toes fall out to either side of the mat. Your hands are going to come out to either side of the mat. Try and make sure that they move away from the body, which will help both of your shoulder blades come flush with the mat. From this position, if you find that your lower back is a little like, come on Christine, this hurts, tilt the pelvis ever so slightly, just the tiniest tilt will actually mean that your lower back comes flush with the mat. If you hold that tiny tilt throughout Shavasana, you'll, uh, you'll find that you'll be able to relax more in this position. If your lower back is quite moany, mine has this from time to time, just bring your feet as wide as the mat, tilt your pelvis towards your face, that tiny little adjustment, and then let both knees come in and kiss towards each other at the centre of the mat. And that one will actually help just take away any of that overextension of the spine that you might be feeling. I say this every week, my back's been good. 
Hopefully I don't jinx it. So I'm gonna let my legs splay out to the side. Now my palms are facing up. Shoulders nice and relaxed with the mat. And if you haven't done so already, just closing the eyes. Now take some really long breath through your nose. Biggest breath you've taken all day. And then exhale it through your mouth. Two more of those. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. One more. Inhale through the nose. And then exhale through the mouth. Really long exhale. All the air. Now as you focus on your breathing, big long breaths in and out. If it's available to you and you've got your breathing to return to neutral, in and out through your nose will actually help you relax so much more. Only if it's available to you at the moment. And just do a little scan through the body. Make sure that we're fully relaxed and we're not storing any tension or tightness. Starting with the face, as you breathe in, place a little focus onto your skin of your face. If there's any tension or tightness there, maybe there's tightness in the jaw. As you inhale, breathe into this space. Send a little breath there and as you exhale, release. Release any tension or tightness in the face and jaw. And place a focus onto your neck and shoulders. Be curious if there's any tension or tightness being stored there that you can release, just so you melt further onto the yoga mat. As you inhale, breathe into this space. And then as you exhale, release. Place a focus on your upper back, your mid back, and down towards your lower back and pelvis. Curious if you feel any pain or tension, is there any tightness being stored there? Maybe your pelvis is tilted off the mat, maybe makes it flush. Breathe into this area. And as you exhale, release. Place a focus on your chest, on your stomach and abdomen. Curious if you feel any tension or tightness there. We work this part hard during the practice. So breathe into this area. And then as you exhale, release. Place a focus on your thighs, knees and calves. If you feel any tension or tightness in the legs, breathe into this area. And then as you exhale, release. Lastly, place a focus on your feet, on your heels, on the arches, the balls of your feet and your toes. Just check the mood of the feet. Are they tight? Are they tired? Is there any tension being stored there? Breathe into this space. And then as you exhale, release. On your next inhale, just feel yourself as you exhale, melt further, sink heavier onto the yoga mat. One more breath. Just become aware of the weight of the body lying on the yoga mat. Of any noises around you. Maybe you become aware of the room that you're lying in. We're going to return the tiniest of movements back to the body. You're going to move your fingers and your toes ever so small, almost to the point where if someone watching you may not even see just the tiniest of movements bringing that energy back to the body. You're going to roll your head 
right ear to right shoulder, rolling it so you can feel that nice stretch through the left hand side of the neck. Keep moving your fingers and the toes. And then as you inhale, bringing your head back to neutral spine. And upon your exhale, left ear to left shoulder. Feel that nice stretch to the right side of your neck. And as you inhale, back to neutral spine. You're going to pull your right knee in to the body. Hug it in. Keeping your eyes closed. And bring the left knee in. Hug them both in towards the body. You're going to roll those knees to the right hand side. And we're going to come into that really nice sleeping position. And roll your knees across. Come into that fetal position where we like to lay in when we sleep. Take a big inhale here. And then exhale. One more. Inhale. Then exhale. We're going to place some weight into our left hand. And we're going to push up from the mat, keeping your eyes closed. And we're going to come into that comfortable cross-legged seated position. When you do so, just check your posture as you land. You're sitting tall, you've lengthened through the lower body, your shoulders are up, back, and your shoulder blades are snuggling in behind. Hands are onto your knees, your chin is level with the floor, and we've just got a nice, proud, open chest here. Take an inhale, and then exhale. One more, inhale, and exhale. Bring your hands together at your heart centre into a prayer position. Keeping your eyes closed, just tilt the head slightly, ever so slightly, just bowing the head, tiny, tiny movement towards your hands. And then rub your palms together, generate some yoga heat. Rubbing them together, feel that energy, that prana, that life force that you can create. As you feel the heat, place both hands over your closed eyes, the palms are covering your closed eyes, and then blink your eyes open under your palms. Become aware of the light. And as you inhale, upon your exhale, rub that warmth over your scalp, down your neck, across your shoulders, down your lower back, over your thighs, down the front of your shins, and as always, ending at your feet. A big thank you for your body for allowing you to practice today. For staying with you throughout that practice so you can practice again tomorrow. As always, hands together at heart centre, up to your third eye, bowing forward. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the practice.